Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. Say with me, engaging the power of favor. Favor can be around you and you not engage it. You can start a car that is fully gassed, ready to go, engine revving, you pushing down on the gas pedal or the throttle, and the, the RPM is going all over the place, and that vehicle doesn't move. Why? Because you've not engaged it. You've turned everything on, everything is on, but you've got to engage the transmission. You've got to engage the what? The transmission. When you engage the transmission, you get transmitted. Hallelujah. My prayer these days is that we will all engage the transmission of the Word of God and that we are catapulted by the Spirit of the living God into another sphere. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is all possible. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, chapter 1, Daniel 1 and verse 9, it says, Now God had brought Daniel into favor. Amen? Now God had, past tense, brought, past tense, Daniel into favor. He brought him into what? Favor. God brings you into favor. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. May God take you now by the hand and take you supernaturally and bring you into favor. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God brought Daniel into what? Favor. And tender love. With the prince of the eunuchs. Who is this prince of the eunuchs? This is a man just like Hegei in the story of Esther that was in charge of what the king wanted done. A chief administrator. And he's a eunuch because, if you're in Nigeria, it says Enoch. Well, <laughs> it's a eunuch because the master wants him to be focused on his issues. Not running around with all the women around. Focus on what he's assigned to do. There is somebody that's assigned to do something in particular for the king. And that person is a person that God is going to use to generate favor or manifest favor in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. We all need favor. Yes. Don't kid yourself. Everybody needs favor. No matter how rich you are, you need favor. Money, yes, yeah, sometimes buys favor. That's true. But money cannot always buy favor. Because money cannot buy favor from a man that is disciplined. That means that your money cannot bribe somebody that is totally disciplined on what he is called to do, to do differently. Are you with me? It takes that man... To look beyond what you have. To extend favor. 
Because ultimately, favor is not linked to what you can bring to the table. It is linked to, you see, if, it is fa- if you call it favor because of what somebody brings to the table, then it's not favor. Favor has nothing to do with what you bring to the table. It has everything to do with what the one who is extending the favor brings to the table to do for you. Amen? Amen? So you, you and I need to line up right now and understand that when we're talking about favor, that we're talking about God doing something extraordinary in your life. I am going to simplify that word favor for you today so you understand it. Actually, maybe I should do that right now. So firstly, leave this Daniel 1, 9 for a moment and come with me to this passage of scripture that will explain to us what favor we are talking about. Let's look at Luke 1 and verse 30 for a moment. Luke 1 and verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. You see that? What have you found? The Word of God says concerning Mary, Blessed art thou amongst women, the Lord is with thee. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And because the Lord is with you, you are blessed. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly what? Favored. The Lord is what? With thee. You are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. And because of that, blessed art thou among women. Because favor selects you. But the great truth about favor is that it's summarized by this statement. The Lord is with you. I don't know if you got it yet. The Lord is with you. And when the Lord is with you, you are favored. (laughs) Are we on the same page yet? The Lord is with you, and because the Lord is with you, you are what? Favored. But not just favored, you are highly favored. (laughs) highly favored because the Lord is with me. Now, when did the Lord come to be with me? First, when he was sent into the world and the word of God says his name shall be called what? Emmanuel. God with us. Emmanuel. God with us with us. But it is not just God with us now when you ask him to come into your life. When you ask him to come into your heart, he comes and he abides with you. And from that very moment, he who comes and abides with you is with you, which means then that if he's abiding with you and he is with you, then you must be what? Highly favored. So when I got saved, I came into the favor of God. 
Are you with me? Please don't lose that point. You know, I could go around and say point um, A, B, C, and I'll finish Z, and I'll start counting from one to two, three. So I don't do that. So I'm making my points now. You make your one A and one B and one Z. That's your business. Amen? God came into my life and I, from that day, came into the favor of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, so what is the issue when we talk about favor? One of the things I shared with, with the saints that were here on Friday was this. That the blessing of favor... Give me Ephesians 1 and verse 3 real quickly. The blessing of favor, while it is a spiritual blessing, is something that God has already done. Please hear everything. I'm talking about engaging the power of favor. I'm not just talking about favor. Now I'm talking about engaging it. Are you with me? Yes. And the first thing I want you to settle in your life, in your mind right now, is that favor is already yours. It was given to you when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. It is yours. You are blessed and highly favored because you are a carrier of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like Mary was a carrier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you didn't hear what I said to you yet. Mary carried Jesus. Did she not? That's why she's highly favored. Do you have Jesus in you? Yes. Then you are highly favored. But what you know and do not apply cannot service you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had what? Blessed us. Who had what? Who will bless us? Who shall bless us? Not will? Not shall? Who should bless us? Not should? Hath, past tense, blessed us with all, somebody say all, all. spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. All of it already done in heavenly places in Christ. So I'm already blessed with all spiritual blessings. Yes? We agree? That we are already blessed. So if we are already all blessed, why do we keep on asking for what we already have? He has already blessed me with some. He had already blessed me with a few. Why are you guys arguing now? The truth is the truth, isn't it? It says all. And in any language, all is what? All. He hath, past tense, done, finished with it, completed, blessed me with all spiritual blessings, and that includes favor. So what is this about God bringing Daniel into favor? What is it about, and you, these are the words that we find when we talk about favor. We'll find things like God gave favor, or somebody gave favor, or somebody found favor, or somebody obtained favor, somebody gave it favor, somebody gave favor. What is that? What is this thing called favor? What is it about? If it's already done, 
What is it that is lacking? Let me share it with you. When God brings you into favor, or you receive favor, most of it is reliant on the other person. Because the word of God says, they found favor in the sight of this person. Amen? They found favor. Or this person found favor in the sight of that person. The idea is this, that favor is always there because God is with you always. Yes? But the recognition of what you are carrying may be hidden from the other person. Because the God of this world blinds them. Now, when we want to operate in favor, and this is something that you have to operate in and by every single day of your life. It is to begin to declare that others will see what you are carrying. That they will see that the Lord, he has been given a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every name must what? Bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. Of the things in heaven, the things on the earth, and the things under the earth. They must see the glory of the Lord that they must bow to in you. Yes. Yes. Oh, Somebody is blinded to the reality of who you are and what you are about and that's why favor has not been released. But when they see something, when they perceive something, when they recognize something, they begin to operate under the lordship of the one that you are carrying. And because they are bound down to the Lord who is inside of you, favor is released to you. Did you hear what I said? Yes. It is not you. It is the one that you are carrying. And therefore, if you are carrying the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you, there is not one man or woman that will be able to resist the word that comes out of your mouth. Not one thing will be able to stand before you and to resist you, to stop you in any way, shape, or form. Because Jesus is not stoppable. The grave could not hold him. And therefore, nothing can hold you down. Because the authority of God is operating inside of you. It is moving in you. It is walking through you. Therefore, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. God is with me. Amen. The first person that needs to know that is me. So the word of God says, God has not given you the spirit of fear or timidity. But the spirit of his love, his power, and his sound, mature, disciplined mind. So don't act fearful. Act as one who's been authorized by God. I'm reminded. Some of you never did get to see this particular situation but some who's be, who've been here for a while do, will recognize what i'm going to talk about there used to be a bus shack right in front of the of our church building right there as soon as you step out the doors it was right there and and because of it there's always garbage in front of the church it was not just an eyesore because of how it was, but because of what it was generating. And I kept on asking for that particular bus shack to be moved. And I was told over and over again, it cannot be moved. Why can't it be moved? Because it is city property. And when the city is put it there, it stays there. The city will not move it. Really? One year goes, two years, 
that problem was still there. And one day the Lord says to me, you want to move that thing? I said, yeah, I want that thing moved. He said, this is the number you call. <laughs> so I called the number. And um, I'm talking to this guy in charge of the city streets. And the guy said, um, it can't be done. And I said to him, it can't be done. He said, it can't be done. I said, yes, you will do it. He said, why do you think I should do it? I said, because I'm asking you now. You can move that sign from there away from my building. It's an ISO, you're moving it. The bylaw says it can't be done. Historically, it can't be done. All, everything said it cannot be done. But God said, you want it moved? I said, yes. And it caused me to recognize that I had an authority inside of me that was greater than whatever the city bylaws were, and that thing was going to move. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yes. So I hung up from that discussion, and one day I was at Salisbury House having um, breakfast with a brother. And Sister Margaret called me. Said there are some people here uh, looking for you from this city. I said, hmm, I wonder why. And the Lord says, you know why? To move the sign. I said, uh, to move the bus shack. I said, wow. So I came and I'd already gone and marked out where I wanted the bus stop to move to. Because I had already gone there and said, this is where, that's where that bus stop is now. I had already marked it out. It's moving from there to there. When they came, guess where I saw them? Where I had already pointed them out to. And three or four of them, you know, dressing their nice uh, suit and tie and shirt, came to me and I'm coming and they identified me and, and said, uh, uh, what can we do for you, sir? <laughs> I said, uh, you can move this here. Where would you like it? Over there. He said, that's, that's what we thought. That's exactly what we thought. I said, okay, move it from there, over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. What did it? It was favor. Are you with me? It was not my long prayers that did it. It was favor, recognizing what I had inside of me. When I recognized it, I was able to make the shift. Until you recognize what is inside of you, what God has put inside of you, until you engage it, nothing changes. You've got to understand that that is yours. And then it changes. You can rewrite the story of your life based on your knowing that God is with you. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Nothing. Who is not only in reference to people, it is in reference to anything It's in reference to anything and everything. What is included in the who? Amen? That means money cannot resist me. You're not listening. Are you listening? Are you hearing? Are you understanding? Are you grasping? Are you taking this? Nothing means nothing. It is not until you come to the clarity in your spirit that this is your right in God, that it becomes yours. You cannot get your healing without you knowing. I am blessed and highly favored. Jesus Christ lives in here. The one who paid the price for my healing lives inside of me. I cannot be sick. You cannot. 
receive it until you settle that. I don't care how many, how many fastings we do. Until you make that engagement, nothing changes. It changes when you make that engagement. That's when you turn it around. Looking at a son who heard a prophetic word from this house that said, no unemployment here. Goes to work the next day and laying everybody off. Laying this one off and laying that off and laying that off. Giving them their pink slip or whatever it is, the slip. And there he comes and they're expecting him to go collect his. But he said, my pastor said, no unemployment here. Not in glory and peace. No unemployment here. So he goes in there and instead of giving him a pink slip and sending him off like everybody else, they kept him. Those that were his seniors, gone. Those that were behind him, that came after him, gone. He is the only one there. And they go and they start trying to get the union to come and, and deal with the situation and get rid of him. And the guys say, uh-uh. We have chosen that he's staying. He's staying. We don't care about your union. What did that? Favor. Are you with me? Favor. Next time on Called to Victory. Make sure you carry yourself as a son of God, as a prince. Amen? A representation of God, an ambassador of God. Don't move around sheepishly like a sheep. Be, <laughs> be bold. When you go to work, carry yourself proper. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Called to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.